deal, and we thank the Lord for that. He is a Christian brother. He loves the Lord, but he has to make a living too, you know, and so he has to be paid. So anyway, to make a long story short, we had to end up spending several thousand dollars that we really didn't have uh, because we had to fix those pipes. It's not wintertime yet, so we didn't need gas to stay warm, but we do need gas to cook. We do need gas to have hot water, and so we, we had to fix it almost immediately. And so we did, and we were able to do it, but it did cost us a considerable amount of money. And I'm not saying that to gripe or complain or to beg or anything other than just you need to know how to pray. That's why I bring things up is so you know how to pray. In this worship center, we worship the Lord. And in the wintertime, it'll get cool in here, and we'll need the gas. We don't have gas here yet. We do have it to the kitchen, and we're still working on that. So you pray about that as well. But uh, this young man, Jason Hershey, said, I, I think we ought to do a David's tent in D.C. And so he applied. He's just sort of young and, and naive. And he went to uh, the park department of Washington and said, I want a permit. And so they gave him all the reams of paperwork to fill out the permit. And a lot of us old folks said, nah, you're not going to get that done. They're not going to let you do that, yada, yada, yada. I didn't say that, though, by the way. Um, some other old folks did. <laughs> but uh, anyway, to make a long story short, David got the paperwork and got a friend to help him, and they filled out all the paperwork, and the people came back and said, well, yeah, we think we can approve this. But you've got to tell us where you want it and when you want it. You know, you got to have a date for the permit. And for, that was the first thing they had to have. And David said, well, why don't we just do it on my birthday? And his birthday is September the 25th. So that's what they put on the application. And then they said, and where are we going to put it? And the Park Department of Washington suggested the ellipse. I guess maybe they were afraid they'd do it on the front lawn, so they wanted to put them on the back lawn. The ellipse is an oval-shaped uh, lawn where they do a lot of things every day, the Easter egg roll there and stuff up there. And they've done some other stuff there on the ellipse. You see that in the news quite often. And so they said, okay, fill it out. Now we're going to do it September the 25th, and it'll be on the ellipse. And as it turned out, the ellipse is in an oval shape. It's not round. It's in an oval shape. And so some of these young people, just very creative in their thinking, said, an oval altar for the oval office. And I thought that was clever. I just wished I would have come up with it. <laughs> but I thought it was clever. An oval altar. They're going to be an altar. They're going to put a tent up there. They said, well, how long you want it up there? And he said, well, how about 40 days? The Bible talks about prayer and fasting for 40 days. So how about 40 days prayer and fasting at this oval altar for the oval office and for our nation? And so the Parks Department approved it. And so on the 25th, they will put, the, well, before the 25th, but by the 25th, they'll put up a tent calling it David's Tent, D.C., and people will go there. Now, they're not going there to demonstrate or to march or do anything. It's there to worship God. It's not Baptist. It's not Pentecostal. It's not Catholic. It's everybody <laughs> to come there and to worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's not a place to go and demonstrate or anything like that. There are other places to do that and other things to do, but this 40 days, David's Tent, is going to be a 40-day worship center, a temporary 40 days worship center. They'll have chairs. They'll be able to play music, and they'll have electricity. At 9 o'clock at night, they will have to cease any amplification, that is, speakers, they can still sing and play acoustic guitars and drums, anything that doesn't have to, that's not amplified. 
And I just found that out today because I said, well, golly, how y'all going to worship at night with no music? And he says, oh, we'll have plenty of music. We just won't be able to amplify it. And, of course, these kids, they like it loud, you know. So I'm sure some of them will struggle with the music not being loud enough. But us old folks will say, hallelujah, praise the Lord for the rule because <laughs> it won't be too loud, you know. But anyway, it's going to be a, a, a time of prayer and fellowship and worship there at the D.C. tent, the tent, David's tent in D.C. Uh, I'm going to be able to go back there, Lord willing, and spend a few days in the tent. I'm looking forward to having not a demonstration, <laughs> not a rally, not a march, but just worship. Just sit down in the tent and worship for a while. Maybe stay all night. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, you pray for me. I do want to go. I am planning on going. The Lord provides. And uh, so you pray for me and others. We've been talking with people. We've been talking about it on the uh, television. If you watching on TV <clears throat> would like to know more about it, go to David's Tent DC dot org. David's Tent DC dot org. And you can find out more about it. And uh, people are going to be coming in. There's, we understand there's over 100 young people that have decided to take a mission trip, a worship mission trip from around the country to go into D.C. and just be there to worship, not to march or demonstrate, but to worship. We don't know who else or how many others. There may be a handful, maybe a big bunch. We don't know, but it's in God's hands. So I want you to pray. It starts on the 25th and then goes 40 days. There's some other groups that are doing a 40 day to pray for America, and uh, they'll be doing that as well, not only there, but around the country. And uh, that's Pray America Back to God. And uh, there's a lot of great, exciting things going on. Uh, prayer days, prayer lines, prayer vigils, prayer and worship services there at the tent. And so we, we, want, to, uh, we want to continue to, uh, to pray for these different events and these different worship experiences. You see, I, I see this not only as a personal thing that would, that's going to be fun in the spirit, i.e. a chance to go and worship, but it's also going to be an opportunity to have people that might not go to church, might not come to talk to you about the Lord, but might just go to that tent and say, what's going on over there? What's happening? And they might see Jesus in some of us, if we'll act right, might see Jesus in some of us and then say, hey, tell me about this Jesus. And so I'm excited about what God's going to do to bring some people to himself. Not only help me worship God better, but bring some people who maybe have never had the privilege of worshiping God because they don't know Jesus. Jeremiah said, O oh, you children, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in uh, Beth Cherim. And uh, for evil appeareth out of the north and great destruction. Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy the, pla the pla places. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate and the land uninhabited. But you see, Jeremiah talks about that and in verse 12 or chapter 12 he says righteous art thou O Lord Jesus when I plead with thee yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments I believe our nation is at a preposis of judgment I think God's going to bring some pretty heavy handed judgment down on this nation if we don't pray if we don't worship him if we don't get our act together Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal treacherously? 
Thou hast planted them, yea, God, you've planted them. John 3.16, in talking about the world, says God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God loved the world so much. And you remember the verse, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I'm praying that this worship experience will draw people to a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a very special, but that's exactly the same thing we do here. That's why we never end one of these worship experiences without giving everyone an opportunity to make sure that they have chosen the path to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So even our worship services have an ulterior motive, that is, to win people to Jesus Christ. Now, I know there's a lot of people that think bad of me in some areas, They think the only reason I'm on television is because I like to see myself on television. I resemble that remark. I do like being on TV. Somebody said he never met a mic he didn't like. But that's not the ultimate reason for it. The ultimate reason for it is to worship and take it to the world on the television, on the internet, around the world, so that they too might see Jesus. I hope that whatever we sing or whatever we preach or whatever we pray, that Jesus Christ will be lifted up. For he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men, and that means women, all men unto myself. And so that's why we do what we do here. That's why we have a worship center. And that's why we want to keep it as clean as we can. We want it to be a worship center so it's not distracting and so forth. And so please help with that when you bring stuff in. Take it out (laughs) and uh, help us with it. But uh, there's a lot going on in our nation A lot of things we need to pray for, especially in light of the election coming up. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm just going to tell you to vote according to this book. I don't care what the office is or what the position is. Use the Bible. Use the Bible to help you know how to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you can't vote. See Brenda, get registered. Make sure you're registered to vote. And uh, you can use this address, as we've said before. And uh, the reason we want you to vote is not just so we can win kind of thing. We want you to vote because we know that's being obedient to the Lord. And if anything we can do to encourage you to be obedient to the Lord, that will bless you. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. And we want to encourage you to get registered to vote and then vote and vote your biblical values and so forth. Now, with that in mind, I want you to pray for David's tent. I want you to pray for other groups that are traveling, the survivors. Those of you, when they get through with this trip, we're going to have the survivors come into our church A number of years ago, a man and his wife started an organization called Survivors. And the reason behind it and the thinking behind it was simply this. If you were born after 1973, after 1973, you are a survivor because... In 1973, our government, our Supreme Court, our churches, our people started the greatest holocaust that has ever been visited on the face of our nation 
and our world. More than 50 million human beings have been brutally murdered through abortion in the last years since 1973. And so if you're here and you were born since 1973, that means you're a survivor. Well, this group named their group the survivors. And they learn and work at how to protest at abortion clinics, how to go before government offices and uh, impress upon them that they need to vote against killing babies and so forth. And so this group called survivors. Most of them are young people. There's a few older folks, but most of them are younger people. And uh, they go into training camps and they learn how to be ladies and gentlemen when you're going before the government, when you're on the street. Not everybody can do that. You know, we all need to learn. And uh, I've learned a lot from the survivors because I've learned sometimes I need to say a little less than what I really want to say kind of thing. And so that's part of the training. They're en route right now. In fact, I think they're in Tulsa. But they're making a trip across country and going to end up in Washington, D.C. And we're going to have a religious freedom day in Washington, D.C. on the 30th day of September. We're going to have two services near the White House. Not at the tent, but near the White House. We're going to have an evangelical service. That is the kind of service we have. And there's also going to be a Catholic service. A rosary will be said. And I've already told people on television and other places, if you see me there, I have not converted to Catholicism. I'm going to be there to stand with them for their religious freedom to do their religion any way they want to. Now, I can agree and disagree with Catholics all night long, and I have some very good friends that are Catholic. But the bottom line is, uh, I want to be there to stand, and we're going to stand. And the name of the group that's doing it is called uh, Acts 29.5. And that's where the disciples had been preaching the gospel, and they ended up in jail. And while they were in jail, the Holy Spirit said, I don't like it that my people are in jail. He brought an earthquake and opened the jails after they had a prayer meeting in jail. And so they were out preaching again on the street. And the government came and said, did we not tell you not to preach in the name of Jesus? Did we not tell you not to do that? And we already put you in jail for it. We'll put you back in jail. And Peter said, Whatever you want to do, go right ahead. We don't want to be disrespectful. We don't want to be disingenuous. But we must obey God rather than man. We must obey God rather than man. And so they obeyed God and continued to preach. This HHS, HHS mandate that Obama and the other people are bringing down is in direct violation of people's religious freedom. Let me tell you how. We don't have a staff here. But let's say, as an example, that we could afford to pay Brenda and Frankie and, you know, and David and David and some of the others of you that work here all the time. Let's say we could afford to pay you if we had money to pay you. And we could get insurance for you. And we would get an insurance policy that would cover our employees. A lot of churches do that because they have the money to do it. But under this new mandate by the government, if you have an insurance policy, that insurance policy covers killing babies. Therefore, part of your money, in fact, what they're going to do is they're going to take $1 away from everybody on the policy and use that to pay to kill babies. That's wrong. Some of these young people have insurance policies. They're going to go and stand in front of the White House and tear up their insurance policy and say, we must obey God rather than men. And others of us are going to be there to pray, and we're going to, they're going to say, you can't pray here. And like I did a few weeks ago, I said, 
I'm in America and I'm going to pray. I'm not going to be in the way. I'm not going to cause trouble. But if you tell me I can't pray, if the government says I can't pray, then I'm going to say I must obey God rather than man. And if I do that, they are liable to put me in jail. Won't be the first time. Uh, but uh, I'm not going there to go to jail. But I am going there to say I'm going to obey God rather than man. The Roman Catholics are especially upset about this because many of them are larger churches and they have big staffs and they have teachers and, and all kinds of things and they're all on the insurance and they're saying we can't have an insurance policy for our church that's going to allow babies to be killed. Therefore, we don't want that insurance. And the government is saying, no, you must obey the government. You must have that insurance. And the Catholics are saying, we must obey God rather than man. So on that 30th and then on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, there are going to be some demonstrations there saying we're going to obey God rather than man. And some of us may end up going to jail. Uh, and so I would encourage you to pray for those that do end up with the privilege of being in jail. Not the first time Christians have gone to jail for what's right. But we want you to pray for those. There'll be some that have never been there before. Some of us old timers just take a nap, you know. <laughs> we, we know how to deal with it. Some other people that won't be quite that fortunate. But uh, you pray for those that might go to jail. Pray that uh, somehow, some way, the government will decide, no, nah, we're not going to put these people in jail. And which wouldn't surprise me because they might decide they don't want the bad press. But anyway, you pray for the David's tent. You pray for the people going to stand for religious freedom. You pray for us that are traveling all the way across the country to go. Pray for those that live right there in D.C. and Virginia that will be close to home. Pray for them. Pray for us as we go. And uh, pray for the Lord's will to be done. Now, are there other prayer requests or praise reports anybody would like to share at this time? Okay. All right. And, um, okay. All right. Peg and Shane are going to be working with the salt and light table, and I want you to pray for them. They're going to be doing that. They're going to be putting that together. Helping all of us be saltier and have a brighter light. And uh, so we praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray uh, for the volunteers that come. That Brenda gets more volunteers and, and that kind of thing. And pray for our grocery bill and pray for our, all our bills. But, uh, pray, uh, but God's been so good to us, I tell you. We got tons of food. God's been so good, and we thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Any other prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good. Okay. If you if you're homeless, you can register to vote. You do have to put an address on there, but you can use this address. Um, and so, if you're not registered to vote, and you think you can legally, and if you have any question about it, I've got two or three attorneys now that will talk to me. If you come to me and say, well, I don't think I can register to vote because of legal problems or whatever, you see me, I'll talk to the lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but I'll talk to the lawyer for you, and we'll see, make sure you can, if at all possible, get registered to vote. So you let us know. And if you're just not registered, if your last address was somewhere else, make sure you get that changed. See Brenda. She's got the applications. Okay? We'll mail it in for you. We'll pay for postage. Get it to them, you get registered, and then you can go vote. All right? Let's uh, have our ushers come forward. 
And uh, let's take our offering for the evening and give you an opportunity to give to the Lord's work here at the church. And let me say to you that if you're watching on television and uh, you would like to give to this ministry, it's not to me personally, it's to the First Southern Baptist Church. First Southern Baptist Church. Make your check out or whatever you want to do. And um, that the Lord will bless you for that. Our mailing address here is 6801 Western Avenue, 6801 Western Avenue in the city of Buena Park, 90621. And you can mail it to us, drop it off, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And by the way, there's a blue box up here. Uh, we're going to have a blessing on this offering. But we're also going to remind you that we have the blue box if you watch our show, you see us putting the pictures of the cross. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful cross when it's done. It's going to be almost 200 feet high. The cross bar itself will be 100 feet. You'll be able to ride an elevator up one side and back down the other, hearing about what Jesus did here on earth. And it's called the Branson Cross. And the reason we're doing the blue box is, is that the fellows that designed this and are building it did not want to pay for it themselves because then they would have to charge admission to go to the cross. And they said, we don't want to do that. So please help us build the cross. So when you put your change or a buck in there, uh, that goes toward the building of the cross. That doesn't come to the offering. That goes directly to them. And we thank the Lord for that opportunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this offering to you. We know that you can use it, you can stretch it, and you can honor it, and we thank you for that. Bless those that gave, bless those that could not give. Bless this offering, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, would you stand, please, and let's have our benediction. The benediction at a worship service is simply to say, it's time to go. <laughs> uh, that means uh, that it's time to conclude our worship here but continue our worship as we go away. Brother Peter Maxent, would you lead us in prayer to dismiss us, please? Amen. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, folks, for coming. God bless you. Have a great evening.